Good afternoon. My name is Joe Bandel, and I am the last Rosicrucian. Uh, today, the topic, the update, you could say Gaia Ascension update, is a welcome one in a lot of ways. Uh, what, what I'm going to title it is The End of Gridlock because what I sense happen, have happening, or what's happened over the past couple months, it's taken me a little while to kind of understand it, um, decipher it, whatever you want to say, but gridlock, where everything's just been locked and nothing can move, that's done because the energies have started to flow. And the only way that I can describe, well, there's several ways, but the, one of the ways I'm going to describe what I'm talking about is that a lot of people think that the world is divided into two categories of uh, two ba a battle a ba ba two battle lines if you will two two sides that are fighting against each other and we would call that the uh, the powers that be or the powers that were uh, or you could say the globalists and the other ones are more like the peasant class, the, the farmers, the, the populists. And there's a problem, there's a problem with some of these descriptions because what, what I, in fact, forget what I just said because instead of two camps there are four distinct camps and what's happened is three three of them have basically aligned together against the fourth one the fourth one is what you would call the elite, the ones that would like to enslave humanity through technology, things like that. So, and this just happened and the energy is just flowing. And I'll give an example of how, well, first I'm going to describe the three groups that have aligned with each other. Because the first group, nobody's going to talk about. The first group is all living life on Gaia. Uh, Gaia has activated herself, and she is supporting and actively supporting all of life upon her. And she supports from the bottom up. So... She's supporting all the cellular life. She's supporting all the plant life, the trees. And then she's supporting the animals. And lastly, she supports humanity. So in this case, all, the, all living things are having a vote in what goes on. And of course, they want life. They want to live. Uh, you're talking from one-celled creatures up to some of the higher species. Uh, dogs, cats, horses, things like that. Whales. They want to live. And they are a force. They have a vote they have a vote in what's going on. And they're usually not mentioned. 
So, that leaves two other groups. I'm going to mention one group that's we call it the the light workers or the star seed group and they're very light oriented a lot of times you could say they're uh, technology oriented um, and even though the light oriented they're heart oriented too so they're they're and their main concern is about humanity or about the other star seeds, things like that. It's about uh, ascension to, they say, 5D or 4D, 5D, whatever. That's really what their, their goal is. And their goal is to raise the vibrations, to raise the vibrations of Gaia and all living things. So... I know, I'm going to repeat this. The one side you have the animals themselves that are kicking in and they're putting their vote. I, this is how I want our world to be. Okay, then you got your star seeds, your light workers, and they're putting in their side and they're saying, this is how I want the world to be. Love peace, harmony, and harmony with nature to a, to a degree, but okay. And then the third group is kind of like what I would call my soul group, which is kind of, we, if we had to choose between humanity and we had to choose between nature, we'd pick nature because to us nature is more sacred than humans are even though we are human and we represent humanity but we recognize nature and the concept of unity of all life itself now like the star seeds, they're talking about unity and everything is all, all one. My group is also saying that we're all one, but the animals are part of that oneness. And they have every right to a life of existence as we do. So that's the three groups that are finally aligned together and they're solidly aligned right now. And they're aligned against the one group, which is specifically uh, like humanity, placing humanity way up at the top, a, a small elite of humanity that's rich and powerful and wants to control everything and doesn't give a damn about life any other life on, on the planet. They, they're, they're going to exploit it. So that is the group that we call the power that were. And generally speaking, they are the group that is holding places of power around the world today, but they are losing that power. Everything that they're trying to do is backfiring on them and going wrong. And if you're kind of wondering, well, how do I tell which side this person's on and which side's that person on? It is getting to the point where you can just tell whether who's winning because the forces of life I'm going to call these three groups, the forces of life, they're winning. And this other group, uh, the death group, if you will, or the elites, the, the powers that were, they... 
they have been trying to divide and confuse the issue. They've, they've been trying to prevent the very alignment that has happened over the last couple months. Okay, so I, I know how I know how these things go. You're you're you can listen to what I'm saying. And you can go, oh that well, okay. Where is your proof? What what are you talking about? I mean I they're like I don't see any of this or whatever. Well and I'm I'm not gonna be able to convince somebody that doesn't want to be convinced. All I can do is I can share a personal experience of my own. And that personal experience tells me what's happening. And I can also say that I, I have heard of other people having a similar experience. Now, I've already shared that my main orientation is toward this organic, nature-loving, you could almost say druid-type personality that thinks all of nature is sacred. In fact, nature is being more sacred than humanity itself. But Earlier in my life, back when I was 19, I joined the Rosicrucian Order, Amork, and I completed their whole 12 degree course of study. It was over 22 years uh, of membership. But it was that, and I, so I, I went on, I was probably uh, 23, 24 years, whatever, but I'm still a member now. I'm, but I I had a, a break from them after completing those studies. And I've, joined, I've since reestablished that connection. And, and the reason that I split was because we have to, as a soul, as we want, if we want to develop our souls, that we each need to follow a mystical journey, which is the path to spirituality, to the cosmic. And we need to follow a path, a magical path, which is back down. Okay, the, the Rosicrucian Order Amork is purely, purely a mystical, philosophical path. And when you're talking about chakra centers, when you're talking about energy, you're gonna be talking about the heart chakra. You're gonna be talking about the throat chakra. You're gonna be talking about the third eye, the crown chakra, and you're gonna be talking about cosmic awareness. You are not going to be talking about any of the lower chakra centers because they don't teach anything about that. It's all higher level stuff. So I spent the first 20, 20 some years of my life going up, up, up in this mystical journey and connected to source. Then there's, I experienced a polarity shift, and it's like, I'm way out in space. I need to get back to Earth. I need to ground myself back to Earth. And I spent the next over 20 years, 25 years or so, trying to get back to Earth because I was so far out. And that journey back to Earth was a healing journey, but it also... It started out with the higher chakra centers, but it worked with the lower chakra centers too. 
and it's the lower chakra centers where Gaia's life exists mostly, where the the one-celled animals or plant, the one-celled life, the plants, the trees, the insects, the 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 animals, the various species, the horses, the deer, the fox, the owls, whatever you want to say, they are living and existing in the lower levels, the lower chakra centers. And the path that is close to what I follow now, I follow my own path, but uh, Druidry is kind of representative of that because I really take on to myself the sacredness of life, of life of all living things. And that that sacredness is that balance of life, the circle of life, it's more important to me than humanity is. And that in the, this is where I live. I'm a space holder, if you will, for somebody who stands for that type of uh, value, value system, and, and it's magical. Okay, but here's what happened. Over the past couple months, I said, you know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to review one a day. I'm going to review a lot of these old Rosicrucian teachings, these monographs. I'm going to just review them. It's been years and years and years since I've reviewed them, and some of them have been rewritten. I've never really studied them. And while I was reviewing some of them, I came to this spot. It was fairly early in the series. And it was like a little self-initiation type thing. And it simply said, among, I'm just kind of saying among other, what, it, what it kind of said, uh, put your hand on your heart and then you say these things. And as I put my hand on my heart and I've said these things, my heart chakra just burst. It, it just flared wide open. It flared. And then the throat chakra just flared wide open. And then the third eye just flared wide open. And then the crown chakra, the side of my head, it just flared wide up. And above my head just flared up. And we're talking about, it was powerful. It was significant. It was like, um, it felt like almost a minute at each one of these chakras before that activity moved on to the next one. And I remember thinking, after all these years, that energy that I put out to the Rosicrucians is coming back to me. Um, but what really happened was this upper level energy, all of a sudden it aligned with me or I aligned with it. We were no longer at odds, if you will. And I've spoken to other people who have had similar things happen where they are part of my soul group, where they're really earth-dominated, earth-life-oriented. And these energies of, of a spiritual nature, these energies of a higher, the higher 
chakra centers have kind of come down to them as a blessing or an initiation as well. So what that was not possible before, before these energies were in a gridlock. We were at odds with each other. And suddenly it became possible to say, I affirm your position. I affirm your advancement. I affirm your ascension into fifth density. And they turned around and said, and I affirm yours to whatever it is. Because we were representing life, if you will. And we were, all of us were against that elite. All of us, really, that's, that's what it was. When we were against that anti-life uh, enslavement, uh, global, artificial life environment. And of course, the animals, all they're caring about it, they're caring about life too. So it went from gridlock, where nothing could move, to all of a sudden three against one. That's what I was trying, that's what I'm trying to share. And I'm trying to share that in my experience, that was an energy transfer that happened. And some of the people that I've talked to, that was a literal energy transfer, a powerful initiatory or healing, whatever it was. It was an energetic connection where energy uh, was transmitted. It was a channel that was opened that had been closed. It had not been possible to be opened before. So when I'm saying there's no more gridlock, I'm saying that from my experience, there was a place where there was gridlock. There was a place that was closed and suddenly it opened up and a lot, a lot of energy burst through, went through a portal, went through a gateway, whatever you want to call it. And this happened on, for me, it happened on 9-9, the Stargate 9-9, which is quite appropriate. So that's why, that's why I'm saying, hey, okay, all of a sudden this energy is flowing and it's a lot of energy and it's a lot of energy and it's dealing with the energy of like four different chakras at least. So something broke loose. And when something breaks loose, like it did, that's a global thing. And so what I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm believing, what I'm predicting is that there's going to be massive things happening uh, the end of this month and the big and next month in October, going into November, probably the whole up to new, all up to the new year and uh, even beyond, because the energy is cut loose and it's it's not waiting to be cut loose. It's it's, it's gone. It's it's gone through certain channels that might not have reached you yet, or it might. It might have, but it's going to. And it's sweeping, it's, it's dealing with global events. So that's the, that's the main point that I, that I really wanted to say. And I'm going to leave you with another point I've done three videos now that are meditations. 
uh, three meditations that are what I call the Oak Ascension series. And in certain ways, they're similar or whatever. What happens is I keep trying to simplify them down. But I want to share from my heart that we are, as this energy breaks loose, gridlock no longer exists, things are going to be happening. The most powerful thing that anybody can do is open your chakras, especially that root chakra, but connect the other ones to your root chakra. So the most powerful thing you can do is a few exercises. One like uh, the middle pillar exercise or the microcosmic orbit, which kind of loops up and down the spine, or the energy ball meditation that I teach myself. Anything that's moving up, moving energy up and down the spine because you want communication between the higher levels and the lower levels to help you get through the things that are going to be happening on the lower levels, which is the levels of survival. Um, that's, I believe that the, the most powerful thing you can be doing that anybody can be doing right now is to get your chakras open especially the root chakra, and get them talking to each other so that you can navigate the turmoil, the turbulence that's going to be coming up that's pretty much immediate. Anyway, that's all that I have, uh, but I felt that it was really important to put that out, uh, to put out that as far as I'm concerned, this is not theory. This has happened, I've experienced it, I've talked to other people who have experienced something similar, or I've read what people have said of something very similar. So it's not just me. Anyway, I'll talk to you, see you next week, thank you.